Hey folks, it's Pastor Greg. Pastor Beth, welcome. And we are here once again with the fourth session of The Way, where Jesus equips his disciples. And uh, we're gonna, this is probably one of my favorite lessons so far, because we get to talk about tools. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that we'll get to power tools. Tim the you know. tool man Taylor there, there sitting here there. just looks like Pastor Greg. I told, I, I told Lynn, you know, don't you wish I had uh, Tim Allen's money instead of being so devilishly good looking? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. We can all imagine how that response Yeah, was. she laughs just like y'all did. Y'all <laughs> y'all are cruel. You know that, right? We previously saw that the disciples of Jesus needed to intentionally adopt a posture in which they can learn from him. And, and we talked at last uh, session about how Jesus' disciples came further up the mountain yes. just than everybody else did. Uh, and that was indicative of the way they spent their life. They followed Jesus and they did hard things. They went to difficult places to do it. In addition, we saw that that process of learning is only complete and only results in the true transformation when you connect it to obedience in your actions. So the more we learn from Jesus and obey his teaching, the more fruit we're going to produce in his kingdom. So let's begin this with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the way you called us. Thank you for the way you lead us and you call us to come with you up higher. Lord, today as we talk about you equipping us for the ministry, equipping us for the the odd situations that we find ourselves in today, in today's world, this is not the America we grew up in. This is not the circumstances we grew up in. Mm -hmm. Lord, you have already put the tools in our toolbox. And if we haven't let you, you want to. So Lord, help us put together the toolbox tonight. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So I want to just kind of talk you through a few things before Pastor goes on with this and, and almost like talking, praying, meditating kind of thoughts um, as we've gone through these weeks. And I, I'm just, there's, there's three bulleted items here and I'm just going to pause after each one of them. Again, if you're watching it live, there are things that you can think about. You can go back and see them later. If you're watching this in a replay to pause. Uh, maybe even screenshot it somehow so you have these three things. So I'm going to kind of talk, pray, think about these as we say them. So um, thank you, God, for what we've learned and experienced in recent weeks. Just take a moment to think about what you have learned, what scripture verses you have come across in a new way or in a more in-depth way. Can I share one? Yes, that uh, would be the, great. The one that you did last week when you you talked about the disciples following Jesus further up the mountain, mm. you hit something that I had never thought of. Um, about uh, we've all gone up a mountain, you know, yeah. or or a hill, and you know, the higher you go, all of a sudden the legs start burning, mm -hmm. the backside starts telling you you're older than you think. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that these are not 25 were, anymore. We're used to walking uh, yeah. uh, uh, places, but climbing is a different story. Climbing is, uh, and and these folks are climbing and they're doing it. And and sometimes, let's turn it to the application that the Holy Spirit did with me mm. is sometimes you kind of get like, God, I'm getting older. This isn't getting any easier. <laughs> And, and right now, our life isn't get is like, could we just get to a kind of like, you know, I still want to follow you, but could we find a plat place? Yeah. <laughs> is there a plateau anywhere? Plateau anywhere, anywhere you know? Uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, like Denver, you know, it might yeah. be a mile high, but it's flat as a pancake. Yeah. You know, that's great. <laughs> How come we got to go for those mountains over there, yeah. you know? And, and no, sometimes it doesn't get easier, but you get better. Yes. And then I think that that really leads into this next one. And so, um, God, we express our desire to be equipped as a participant in your mission for the world. And, and the thought is be honest about what you would like to gain and where you'd like to grow in order to do this. Like this is, this is a good conversation with God. 
as to what what do you want to do just because it's your idea doesn't mean the Holy Spirit hasn't led of you what are the desires of your heart because if you're living this life of a disciple you've got the desire the desires in your heart are from the Holy Spirit so be honest about what you'd like to gain and where you'd like to to grow um, and this idea of Jesus's mission for the world and I'll tell you really personal little story on the on a, on a really surfacey level um, the very first Sunday that I ever preached in church six years ago something like that when I, I just that I had just been given church credentials the very first Sunday and I had someone in the in the congregation who'd always been close to me and was one of those people who could speak something into my life and I knew that she was on that she wasn't you know she didn't just have these thoughts that she ran around sharing that I knew that this was from the Lord and it had something to do really with with missions and with children and with being overseas and all of these different things and all of these years I've really thought about that because obviously I'm not going to pick up and just because my my husband and I have a different life and we have you know all the things we we haven't been called the way that I, I referenced my friend and her family had been really called together but but God had it have many, with this interaction with Judy Mench and, mm -hmm. and the children's evangelist and and I just kind of sat and prayed about that for years and I really still haven't seen what that's going to accomplish although I got really excited when God sent her back home again and she's continuing to be an international children's um, evangelist overseas by being based here in the United States and and whatever possibilities that'll have once the virus is over but that's one of those things like I'm, I'm holding on to that those things ask God be honest with God about what do you want to do for him and because he'll take it and direct it and move it around and then the last one and as a prayer and and as a focus is God give us courage to understand what we encounter in your words and then to obey that give us courage because if if we're gonna if we're gonna follow you up that mountain if we're gonna listen with disciples ears and not just with students ears not just with the average person's ears then we have to do something with it and sometimes that takes courage and God will give us wisdom and courage and everything that we need to follow him but we got to ask that's right so grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 10 Pastor Beth is going to uh, uh, share that with you in just a little bit, but uh, do get there. Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to skip around, but we're going to start with verse 1. While you're getting your Bible, let me ask you a question, and this, I, I took this page because this is absolutely me. Yes. Are, do you DIY? Do you DIY? You know what oh. DIY is? Well, that I do. You just do? But, yes, but just it looks different. different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DIY is an acronym that stands for do it yourself. And it's a phenomenon of people that tackle home improvement projects or craft projects or sewing projects and they DIY. They do it themselves. They do it yourself. Rather than calling on plumbers or carpenters or seamstresses or other professionals, DIY people take pride in successfully completing a project and saving money at the same time. And millions of people attempt to tackle home improvement projects every week. But just attempting a project doesn't make you a DIY. In fact, one main difference exists between DIY and non-DIY people. You know what it is? I can think of a few things. It's not always the expertise, it's the tools. You can usually tell if a person is a real DIYer by the tools they have. See, the, uh, DIY people have learned from experience that the right tool is often the difference between a job well done and an expensive mess. For that <laughs> reason, and I'm going to tell you, my wife has always, she has never um, begrudged me on tools. She, uh, like back in the early days when we had, you know, uh, when we were newly married and didn't have money was tight, uh, living in New York City on a youth pastor's salary yeah. with secondhand cars and so forth like that. She never begrudged me the money to get a tool because she, she was like, you save us so much money by doing it yourself um, that whatever you need, whatever makes it possible for you, you just do it. And Lynn is so fantastically creative oh and goodness. handy and engineering 
engineering minded anyway. Uh, she's uh, she is. She's as mechanical as most men. So I, I never had to. In fact, if anything, Lynn would often tell me that I was trying to make do with too uh, too little instead of too much because Lynn has never honestly. Lynn has never seen a tool she didn't like. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. Uh, she really is. She, she goes is. into she goes into the hardware store uh, or you know to the Home Depot and she wants to buy more than I'm like no slow down I'm good I'm good I'm good uh, so here's a question you let's uh, where are we going with this spiritually I'm glad you asked me that question would Jesus give you a job to do without equipping you to be successful fortunately the answer is no and in this session we're going to see how Jesus equipped the disciples even when he sent them out to fulfill a, a specific mi mission it was an important moment for the early disciples and it carries a lot of implications for when we seek to participate in Jesus mission in the world um, in what ways I want you to think for a moment in what ways would you like to feel more equipped as you participate into Jesus mission for the world today think about that I think for me, one of the things is to, I would like to feel more equipped to understand where people are coming from because people think so totally different than they used to. Uh, the things that motivate them, the things that they get all excited about, the things that they blow off that I think are important, I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. And, and I don't always get the way things, I don't get the politic, uh, the, how everything is politicized. I don't get that. I don't get why things aren't just practical, why it has to be. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of things I don't get. I don't get why you need an app to do everything instead of just like <laughs> doing it with your hands like God gave you. I, they, I mean, there's a, so there's a lot of things that, that I don't understand. And yet God has given me the word of God and it's really what people need. And, and so sometimes I'm looking for a tool that isn't in my tool bag, uh, bag and God isn't going to put it there because that's not what he wants me to use. Yes. It, it's not the right, I, I, it, it's maybe I don't need to understand them because have, have you ever had people tell you about their feelings when, you know, your feelings are not really important right now. You need just, you just need to put the, you need to put the peg in the hole. You need to get it done. And and sometimes I, I think that, that we begin to look for tools that God doesn't want us to use and say, no, don't, don't worry about that. Concentrate. Use this. And he sure gives us that example in these verses. And I'll tell you, the the introvert in me begins having hot flashes when I read through these verses and just like little mini panic attacks at the thought of having to do what Jesus sent these disciples out to do. So Mar Matthew 10, and hopefully you're there by now, Verse one. and you found a Bible um, that this marks this turning point where up until this point, Jesus, the, the disciples had just, you know, you here's Jesus, here's the disciples. Like if you were, if this was a flannel graph, here would be the Jesus flannel graph and here would be the disciples and Jesus would go here and the disciples would follow. Except now we get this point where he gives them a mission and he sends them out in pairs to minister away from him. And, and I'm going to read it, but this is where this part of my brain says, man, I wish that there had been a couple chapters in the Gospels that had given us some details of what that must have looked like. Because if you read into these directions here and imagine what must have happened in some of these places, that, those had to be fascinating sub-stories. So it says, summoning his 12 disciples, Matthew 10, verse 1, Summoning his 12 disciples, he gave them authority, oh, listen to this, over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease and sickness. I'm going to pause there for a minute. That's what Jesus has been doing all this time. And now he gives that power to the disciples. They can cast out those evil spirits. They can heal people of every disease and sickness. That leprosy that was a death sentence for people, the lameness, the blindness, all the things, all the things, he gives them that power. And then he says in verse 5, Jesus sent out these 12 after giving them instructions. Now here's the instructions. Listen to this. Imagine somebody giving you these marching orders and then going, okay, now go. 
don't take the road leading to other nations and don't enter a Samaritan town. So clearly he's sending them to the, uh, to the Jews and to Jewish villages. That's, that's their target audience. Instead, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, announce this, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin diseases. Please remember that for these good Jewish boys, they weren't supposed to go anywhere near people with this. skin. No. Nowhere near this. Just keep that in mind. You're not supposed to touch the dead dead people. No. You, you leave that to the people who touch dead people. Right, which yeah. was not them. Yes. They'll touch <laughs> fish, but not exactly. dead people. Exactly. Drive out demons. You have received free of charge. Give free of charge. Don't take along gold, silver, or copper for your money belts. Don't take, don't take a traveling bag for the road, or even an extra shirt, sandals, or a walking stick. For the worker is worthy of his food. When you enter any town or village, find out who is worthy and stay there until you leave. I wonder how they found that out. I wonder how they determined that. Maybe that had something to do with what we were talking about in the other lesson about a counterfeit as opposed to a real maybe just something to think about greet a household when you enter it if the household is worthy let your peace be on it if it is unworthy let your peace return to you if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words shake the dust off your feet when you leave that house or town i assure you it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of sodom and gomorrah than for that town there. See, I didn't even put that Old Testament reference in there. Jesus put that Old Testament <laughs> reference in there. You go back and read about Sodom and Gomorrah, and you'll see what happened to them. So he wasn't saying anything nice about them, but it really was like, don't take anything. Don't prepare for this. Don't just go and let it happen. And I, like I said, I have heart palpitations just reading this thinking, oh my gosh, I couldn't just, yeah, that, that was hard. That was really hard. And think about that. What part of those instructions would have been the most difficult for you? I mean, they went with somebody. At least they had a partner, I think, right? Mm -hmm. but, but that was it. it, it one, one of the things that drive, uh, drive, would drive me crazy is the order in which Jesus gives them. He, he tells them, heal the sick, um, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the skin, those, drive out demons you've received. And then later, then he tells them, don't take any tool, or what, I, or what I would consider tools, things that you need. Um, because, okay, like I'm frustrated, I, every time I'm frustrated on these lessons. Y I didn't share this with you. But we're 10 minutes before we get to scripture. It, it drives me crazy yeah. that they, they, they set the scene before they, cut, because my, training has always been go to scripture first and and yeah. and then get there and Jesus kind of does the same thing he tells them all this stuff oh by the way don't don't you don't use this and this and this to me the first thing you do I, when I do a job like Taylor just uh, me he made a barn out there uh, and and, and the first thing that you do before you read all the instructions is you get the materials list and the tools list. There's a t materials, you know, if you're, he bought these plans and he made every piece and so it did not come from a kit. He c made and cut every piece from plans, but, but he got the materials list. So that's the first thing I wanna do. When I worked construction, it used to drive me crazy. We would be th there, I was there um, after uh, like, uh, two weeks and I come in at nine o'clock and they they said well it's nice that you could join us I'm like what do you mean well I'm like well work starts at 8 30 I'm like you guys don't do anything but drink coffee until until nine o'clock we don't ever start till 9 15 you sit around and shoot the breeze I thought you were just coming early to hang out I didn't know that work yeah I'm like I'll be here at 8 30 I had no idea because you're, you're just you're just killing time here and we never have the tools we never have the materials we always have to send somebody down to the, to horns lumber to get the lumber to do the job and I'm like you're driving me crazy that's the first thing <laughs> you know um, and Jesus kind of does the same thing to them so welcome to the garage welcome to the workshop if you go into my workshop right now because we have everything jammed in there yeah. for Taylor it's like it is a mess now everything's in there but it's hard to find Jesus is now sending them and he says and he's telling them all that stuff that you thought you needed you don't need it 
but how are we going to get around without money? You don't need it. Well, couldn't we use a walking stick? You don't need it. Don't, well, what if we get attacked? You don't need it. Um, what, how about food? You don't need it. God's going to provide it. Um, okay, I hope you... S did you send one of us to Horns Lumber to get this, this, the materials or something? In our efforts oh. to live as Jesus' disciples, Jesus equips us with a number of important resources. We have the Bible, for example, which serves as our foundation for understanding God, the world, and history. We have access to the church which is a community of brothers and sisters working in ser together in service. And we have our own unique mix of talents and abilities. And Jesus it, it tells these guys, now other times he tells them to take a sword and to take a bag, but not this time. So what Jesus is doing is telling them what's appropriate for the situation. And Jesus is doing this particularly in the beginning because he's trying to show them that really the power of God is all you need. That your talents, that the things that you have, he's already placed it in you. Mm -hmm. And he's already paired you with somebody that'll work with you. He's already paired you with, it, with a partner. He's already got people in your life that will help you do this work right can now. I, can I point out what Absolutely. you just read that goes yep. just really, 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 that idea of the access to the church to a community of brothers and sisters. You and I both know that that no one is perfect and if they were perfect the minute I would walk into the room I would wreck that whole that whole thing going on there. But but the, the fellowship that we have together, spending a lifetime, it's a gift to spend a lifetime in really fantastic churches. None of them were perfect, but really fantastic churches where I learned so many things from being together. And can I encourage you right now, if you still haven't come back, or if you're brand new with us and you haven't come to a live service, come and be a part of the family of God in the church. It is just huge. It is just a huge thing, that, that feeling of not being alone. Whether or not that means you're here every time the doors are open or whatever that looks like for you. But if you are new to this idea of Christianity and you haven't recognized yet what that family of believers is like, what Pastor is talking about, come and see that because it, you really can't underestimate how much power and strength and wisdom there is and there. That, that's one of the tools, it's invisible. Yeah. They're, they're going out without gold and silver and this, this they don't realize the strength that they have in, in the fellowship. They don't realize the strength that they have in the power of God and they don't r realize the gifts and abilities that they already have. Um, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin disease, dry out demons. You receive free of charge, so give free of charge. Yes. It's a totally different mindset. Free of charge. That's giving of yourself. I, I don't even think that that's, I mean, that that's really obvious that that's not talking about stuff. That's giving of yourself and giving of your time. And sometimes that's a, a higher price commodity mm -hmm. than the money is. Sometimes it's so much easier to go, you need 20 bucks, here's 20 bucks. <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> but to stop and give yourself and your time because it's been freely given to you. And there's a quote here, I really love this. It says, we must never lose sight of the crucial truth that our most important resource is following in following Jesus is our access to Jesus himself. So not our commentaries, not our Bible school education, not even the people in the church, not our, our checkbook, not our abilities, not what we know how to do. It's that idea of not our, it's our, not our ability, but our availability mm -hmm. and also our access to Jesus. Now these disciples, and you think, they had real access to G like a physical one on one. Mm -hmm. Like they had, they had campfire songs with Jesus. I think that's, I'm sorry, I, the children's pastor and me just can picture a little. You know, maybe maybe John had the had the guitar and they just would sing. I no, really, I'm and, going and off. And he road. played "Sweet Home Galilee." <laughs> I'm but trying, they had, work with me, work with me. <laughs> they had this real connection to him, but we have that same connection. In fact, you know, Jesus 
said to them, and it, it, he's he made commentary. I, I think on on both ends, we have things that the disciples didn't have. We have the entire, not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament, and all of those things at our disposal. At our fingertips. And we at see the end of the story. They were yeah. helping to write the story, so. That's a just a don't lose sight of how important that is that your access to the Father is unimpeded. You don't have to go through anyone, it is really unimpeded. So, if you don't think you could have handled those commands, you are correct. I, I told I, my heart's palpitating at the idea of following those directions. But people don't possess that supernatural abilities on their own, that was God given to them at that moment. Disciples today are called to achieve a different goal, but an incredible goal, the advancement of God's kingdom throughout the world. Now these disciples, Jesus' disciples, had different places in the world they went to, and in reading through, I think Fox's Book of Martyrs can get a little gross with its description sometimes, but it does give you really some good information as to where these disciples went and where they, didn't we have, we had two people at Glad Tidings who had come from a part of the world, um, Mitain and Mitcam, mm -hmm. that that the people in that part of the world could trade. Wasn't it Thomas? Thomas. The apostle Thomas. Thomas. Jesus is Thomas. Mm -hmm. And we met people who had come to anyway. I mean, that's they certainly followed Jesus's you know commands, but we have those same commands. He is giving us the power to do what he's giving us the direction to do. And then Jesus clarifies what we don't need. We think we need things. I think I need all my scrapbooking tools. I really do. I really do. Uh, but there are things spiritually we think that we need that we really don't. We don't need a, a we don't need a seminary degree to be able to share the gospel or our own experiences. Jesus not just he didn't just equip the disciples with his power and his presence he also made sure they understood what they didn't need so if you're still in matthew just these two verses i'm going to read you 9 and 10 matthew 10 verses 9 and 10 don't take along don't in other words you don't need gold silver copper for your money belts don't take a traveling bag that would have been really hard on me for the road or an extra shirt sandals or a walking stick for the worker is worthy of his food. In other words, you're going to be taken care of. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Now, does that mean you should get rid of all your suitcases the next time you go on a mission trip? Of course not. I do not think Judy Mensch would have appreciated me showing up at her house for that two-week mission trip with no clean clothes. I don't think she would have appreciated that in her house. No, that's not the point. Um, you shouldn't abandon your bank cards and your all of those things when you're serving in church no but jesus was calling the disciples to let go of what made them feel safe and comfortable and that's really the point that here. was the point and before he, he, you went on the mission that, that's right he uh, uh, again as i referenced before uh, another place he tells them go ahead and take uh, take these things but not this time and and he's doing this specifically to, to let them know how much they don't need and what the most important right. thing they do that yeah. was a leap of faith for them it was it was. When's the last time you took a leap of faith? What's the last time? Uh, okay, I'm not fond of leaping. How, how about the last time you took a step of faith? Yeah. Because a lot of times God doesn't show us this, this huge thing, the chasm to leap over. He's just asking us to take the next step. Sometimes he doesn't even show you a couple of feet in front of you. No. That, I think that was really my last lesson and my, my main lesson personally in the last year or so is just keep going. Just, just keep going on that path that's in front of you and, and it's going to make sense eventually when he's ready to clear up that fog and pull the curtain away and then you go, oh. But sometimes you're not going to get that oh moment until you've just taken those steps. So now I'm, I want to get rubber meets the road down and dirty okay ready as modern christians we have to understand that what jesus is calling us to, to do is far beyond our own abilities and resources if you can do it by yourself it isn't god mm, honestly for sure. <laughs> uh, if you can if the thing you feel god has called you to do you can do it by yourself in your own strength 
It isn't God. God always does ask you to do something that's beyond you yeah. so that when it gets done, everybody around you and you yourself cannot say, well, I did that. There's an Ever Old Testament story for that. <laughs> Read up on Gideon later. Shh. Back to your part. Because everybody will look at you and go, no, including you, and go, no, you're no. not that good. <laughs> no, that's right. For um, sure. If, to be frank, if your concept of following Jesus fits neatly into the American dream, our culture's conception of a normal life, you need to stretch your understanding of what it means mm -hmm. to be a disciple of Christ. We are in this current cl climate where where it's becoming increasingly uh, uh, unpopular to be a Christian, where having Christian values gets mocked, um, where there is so much unbridled hatred mm. of all things Christian. And very frankly, we have some very visible Christians who have not helped us one yeah. bit. And they've, they've turned the, the following Jesus into something that is repulsively political. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, honestly, I'm thinking, uh, and, and then are shown to be so hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Right now, I, I'm just, I'm still livid over Jerry Falwell Jr. And yeah. that whole, yeah. I mean, that whole scene is so messed up. And it was so hypocritical, uh, 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 that, that facade of holiness and this yeah. right-wing politicized stuff and it's so and then to find out that uh, there's goings on that I won't even I don't even want to describe I don't even how you get how lost do you get to do I, I understand people having affairs you know they, they, they get um, trapped in their emotions and maybe the 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 uh, how far off do you get to do th this this stuff folks we are in a culture where there's so much hatred and there's been so much hypocrisy we're called to be better than that we're called yeah. to be different and and in this current climate r r Last week we talked about um, having that rock solid foundation. This week we're talking about what you really need. You really need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit should have that convicting power that if you're going too, too far afield, you're good. That Holy Spirit slaps yeah. you and says, this is inappropriate. You're, this is not yeah. following Christ. And the Holy Spirit will call you to then share him where, where, where you say, but, but this is, these folks are the radical LGBTQ folks. How can I possibly, there's so much vitriol, there's so much hatred. How can I, how can I counter that? And, and you'll find um, God will make an opportunity. Yes. I don't want to share. Uh, I don't want to share something that's private. But God made an opportunity f for Lynn and me just last week, in just that kind of, of thing. It, it was totally happenstance. It was nothing that we could have done. But we had been praying for an, just an opportunity to share Jesus with some some folks that would y you would not expect us to uh, be able to share. But then you Jesus had to be with. obedient. Yeah. It just. It just happened it just came our way and we were we were obedient and was it inconvenient yeah it was yeah it was inconvenient but we'd been praying for it it was yeah. it was and and um God will bring you through this current climate and culture. Yeah. Folks, I know that there's a loss of the feeling of Amer this isn't the America we grew up in. Yes, I, I understand that. I get that. But this is, this is what our missionaries experience when they go to communist countries, to, to uh, Muslim countries, where, where there is not only resistance to the gospel and, and, and contempt for the gospel, but there is actual hatred for the gospel and for Christian people. And they, we, we know that they're called, we are now being called in to be missionaries to our own country. Yeah. And, that's, and, and it's time for us to man up. So if you're going to engage, you need to set some goals. Now for some people, you're like, yes, I can, I can draw a chart, I can put bullet points, I can get out my highlighter, and if, if you're nerdy like that, I'm with you. You're my people. And <laughs> if, if the idea of that just made you go, oh please, stop talking about things like that. You put it in whatever perspective. But, but setting goals is a good practice. If you're going to get the most out of this area of your life, 
This is an investment of your time. God has called you to this. This is like Pastor was just saying, when that obedience, that, that took some time, that took some effort. So thinking about that, um, take a moment to to set some goals. And if, if you don't want to set goals, just pray about it. Just pray about this idea of how would you like to grow as a follower of Christ? You could have a, a short-term goal and a long-term goal. That could be things you might want to see yourself doing later on that God has given you the beginning of a little vision for. And how are you going to get there right now? Because really, that could just start with listening to your Bible, reading your Bible, and praying. That really simple. Or you could draw a really cool T-chart like the book has here with highlighting. But again, you know, that's we'll not for if, everybody. Lin Linny, if you could put that yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> that would just make... Pastor make Beth's day, day right. if you're Lenny, if you would just right. put that up for us. And then the second question is, She's what laughing. would you like, I'm sure, <laughs> what would you like to achieve as a follower of Christ? And, and we really are going to close with that, but as a follower of Christ, to not just be, not just be, but do. Jesus didn't call his disciples to follow him on the mountain and then live out a nice quiet little life after his death and resurrection and, and go about their business. They changed the world. You can change the world. How are you going to change the world? Ask God what he wants from you. If you go to do street evangelism in South America, you share the gospel and soon you can have dozens and even hundreds of people in the streets. Mm. But if you go to share in Japan where it's resistant, oh no, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. We are now in a culture that is more like Japan mm. and more like sure. Europe than like South America. So the days of probably the large scale Billy Graham style evangelism, those are probably kind of behind us. We are in but that doesn't mean, that means you change your goal yeah. and you say, Lord, this is appropriate, this is appropriate. Can I challenge you? When's the last time you shared Jesus with somebody? Mm. When's the last time you shared Jesus with somebody who's never heard or never heard it in a good package, never heard it from you, yeah. never heard your story? When's the last time? Surely these are good goals. Surely yeah. these are good goals. To just, we're not saying get them saved. That's God's uh, responsibility yeah. to share. Heavenly Father, Jesus, teach, uh, uh, give us opportunities. Open our eyes yeah. to the opportunities that are around us and help us believe that you've already put the tools in our toolbox, yeah. that you've already given us, you've already given us your spirit. You've already have the presence of good people around us. And you've already given us talents and abilities that are within us. Sometimes we feel like we need more education, more money, more tools, more to uh, toys, and what we really need to do is to realize how little we need yes, when we God. have you. Thank you, Lord. Help us set appropriate goals this week and make some of them happen. In mm. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't miss next week. It'll be the last of the five-week series. Make sure you ring that little bell, subscribe, and share all those cool things. That's one of the great ways of sharing your story right there. It really is. Have God a great bless week. you. We love you. Bye. Bye bye.